today I will show you how to knit a big pinwheel pillow. If you want to knit one on the E6000 or if you want to use the form computer I will leave the link to the program in the description. The one I will knit today won't be with the swirly wedges. First rotate the racking handle to its lowest position. Raise 128 needles on the front bed of the machine, 64 to the left and 64 to the right side of the center. Place the edge springs on the last working needles and use the orange ruler to arrange the needles in one to one division. Move the right edge spring on the last working needle, then set the front lock to N and the stitch size to 1. Set the back lock to GX and insert the black strippers. Now take the waist yarn. Knit one row. Raise the rest of the needles on the front bed, place the right edge spring on the last working needle and tap on the needles to tighten the yarn. Increase the stitch size to 4 and knit one row to finish the cast on. Tap on the needles again and increase the stitch size to 5. Now knit 20 rows with the waist yarn. Tap on the needles when knitting the first few rows. Clear the row counter and set the front lock to BX. Raise pushers on the row needles in working position. Now take the main yarn. I'm using two strands of acrylic yarn. Lower the front bed and attach four evenly spaced weights. Put four pushers on the left in resting position and knit one row. Now put four pushers in resting position on the right and knit one row. Repeat these steps until there are only eight pushers in working position in the middle of the bed. By the way, if you don't wind the yarn around the needles while knitting the short rows, you will have small holes. I have a video of how to wind the yarn the right way to make the holes disappear. You can watch it by clicking on the info card in the upper right corner. If you don't have the time to wrap the yarn around the needles, you may tell everybody that the holes are decorative and you made them on purpose. This is the right way to confuse them. Follow me for more life tips. Now the row counter is at 29 rows and the lock is on the left side of the machine. Put the last group of 4 pushers in resting position. Knit one row. You must have 8 pushers in working position. Now start raising the pushers in groups of 4. Every time you have to raise or lower pushers on the opposite side of the lock. By the way, I got the idea for this pillow from this doily. The first time I raised twice the number of needles and I was lowering and raising pushers on both ends. The process is exactly the same as in the video, just the number of needles is different. That's why the wedges have a triangular shape. If you have a pattern for a round thing that wants you to lower pushers in groups and then you have to raise them back in the same order, you will have triangular shaped wedges. If you have to lower the pushers in groups but in the end you raise all of them at once on the final row, you will end up having swirly wedges. 
When knitting a round piece with swirly wedges, the small holes between the wedges will be tiny and you don't need to wind the yarn around the last needles. For this pillow you have to knit 10 wedges in total. Don't forget to rehang the weights frequently, especially when knitting the last wedges. Now the first wedge is ready. I will use the row counter to count them. Take the second color for the second wedge. Lower the front bed and rehang the weights higher on the knitting before knitting the next wedge. Now repeat the same steps to knit the other wedges. As you can see, I have 9 wedges and 60 rows for the 10th wedge. Clear the row counter and set the front lock to N. Now take the waist yarn and knit 20 rows. Leave the eyelet in the color changer or take an empty one. Take off the weights from the knitting. Now slide the lock to the left to remove the knitted piece. It should look like this. Now you have to sew both sides together. I can't sew them on the right side because I don't know how to do it so I made the seam on the wrong side. Now I will turn it inside out through the one of the side holes. It took me some time but it's possible. By the way, if you are knitting the pillow with the swirly wedges you won't be able to sew it that way because the wedges will close the hole in the center and you won't be able to turn the pillow inside out. One eternity later I successfully turned the pillow inside out and now I have to remove the waist yarn. Now use the yarn tails and sew one of the holes closed. Then iron the pillow. Make sure your iron is not set to its maximum like mine. It looks perfect, what do you think? Now we only have to fill up the pillow. I will use the rest of the wadding which I got from the old winter jacket. First I will cut it into small pieces. Now watch carefully how I'm wasting my time filling up the pillow because I don't know how to sew it from the right side. But here comes another question, if I knew how to make the seam on the right side, how would I be able to remove the waist yarn in the end? Maybe I have to use a ravel cord. You also have to think about this before starting to knit that pillow. I know that you will share your ideas in the comments. Finally, it's time to close Pandora's box or in other words, time to sew the center. So this is the small one. And this is the bigger one. The diameter of the small one is 18 cm or 7 inches. And the diameter of the bigger one is 41 cm or 16 inches. That's all for today, have a nice day and see you in my next video.